Hello everybody, it is Ebontis, and today we got the Whisper mission back, and we also get to craft Whisper of the Worm. Now, for reference, like White Nail 2, we're going to be able to get White Nail 3, White Nail 4 in future weeks. I'm guessing that part's time-gated. As you're crafting it, like this week, White Nail 2, unlock the barrels. In future weeks, we'll get magazines, we'll get stocks, and also your trait options are going to be a separate quest. Going to be a separate video just to kind of go through. It's going to be a short one, but again between the secrets for Onslaught, for some of these other things, subscribe to the channel because I've got a lot of stuff coming for Destiny in the next, like, couple of weeks for sure. So if you don't want to miss anything, hit that alert bell and subscribe button and you guys will get a lot of guides for all of the stuff we're getting with Into the Light. But, a couple things about the mission. Uh, it's 1810 on normal difficulty, you have 40 minutes. Not a stretch. I did it in 20. You've got plenty of time to sit there and plink on the bosses if you got to. If you're having real struggles with time, just practice the traversal section so you get comfortable, and then you should have time for combat. If you're with other people, combat will not be that hard on normal. Now, Void Threat, not that big of a deal, but the Axiom Darts are really going to hurt, so something to pay attention to. So my advice is set yourself up with some good DPS options that are going to kind of let you work from cover, and then also set yourself up with some Resilience and some Healing. So for Solar, for example, I did Torches, Solace, Mercy, Empyrean. I didn't even use a healing grenade because my Bonk Hammer and stuff like that, I've got a way to get some heals. But again, throw a healing grenade on there. I didn't use grenades all that often, but they have some benefits, so I did. Now, for damage on the bosses, I use Dragon's Breath. It cooks them really well. And if you're grabbing the Rally Flag right before you start the boss section, having a chess piece set up like this is a really good idea anytime you're picking up a Rally Flag if you just want to max out your ammo. And then if your equipment's not locked, just switch. The thing to know is if you go to, say, like a planet and you grab a Rally Flag with something like this, you need to go only to orbit. You cannot go to a social space, otherwise it'll kind of reset your ammo. But if you go from the planet, either straight into the mission or just to orbit in the mission with like this chest piece on, and then you land, just land, switch, and then you'll at least have all the, the extra ammo. But the nice thing is, if you just switch over to this, grab the rally flag right before the boss fight, you should be good for pretty much everything in here. Now, one thing to mention, there is a lot of traversal in the opening part of this. It's something a lot of you are probably going to have to get used to. If you have anything like Lion Rampants for Titans... Uh, stand, what am I trying to think of? Stompies for a hunter. If you're a warlock, you can do um, Icarus Dash and you can also do Heat Rising. Any of your floating abilities, warlocks probably have the safest landings, I would say. And then also, depending on, you've got Grapple, if you're willing to do that. I went solar because when I got to the combat section, I wanted to go straight into it with all my abilities fully charged. Your call once you get comfortable in what you need to do. I've got my chunk weapon for boss damage, but there's also a lot of blights. Fusion rifles for me work pretty well, but better than most things, at least, that I've found so far. I've got ad clearing weapons. You've got Polaris Lance for some range, Sunshot. Depending on your build, your loadout, even an Amit is what I used for just the final boss room. And then for heavy ammo, I used the machine gun for the earlier parts just to be able to clear all the ads because then I switched over to my big boss damage weapon, hit the rally flag, and then this is what I used for the final boss room. Not too bad. Now, there are some secrets in here. Those will be in a separate video. Uh, we've got a couple oracles. I show you where one and two are, but it seems we're gonna, like we're going to be looking for a lot more of these in future weeks. So stay tuned. As I said, a um, lot more videos coming for me just on this mission alone. Much less more in May, and then on onslaught and lots of other things to come. So we got a lot of secrets. I point out just a couple. So when you go to craft your whisper, you are able to get at least white nail two. Now, if you pick up the thing that I show you, like literally oracle number one, and you get white nail three or white nail four. I don't know why. Weird bug. I'm hearing it's going around. So if you get a different one, instead of two, that's going to get you barrels. Three will give you magazines. Four will give you stocks. You'll eventually get them all. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Should be okay. Now, if you already have the catalyst, you should be able to craft it with the catalyst, which is nice. You don't have the catalyst. You'll be running it on legend. That's a separate video because you have to do this first. Now, so you'll go talk to Eris Moyne. She's going to give you the mission. And she's going to tell you, go do the Whisper mission. Cool. When you're done with that, she's going to give you Whispers of the Taken. This will be like a separate little video. This is how you're going to get your crafted traits. So when you actually go to get the crafted weapon, how you can get field prep and other things. I'll go through a couple pointers on that separate video, though. And the reason I'm doing separate videos, different searches, this is going to be a long enough video anyway. I'm trying to keep it relatively short, which I probably haven't done with this intro, but I'm doing my best. So... Get yourself an ad clearing weapon, get yourself a high damage weapon, get yourself a backup weapon, get some resilience where you can, and at 1810, you got 40 minutes, so just learn the traversal. So let's jump in. We'll show you how that works. 
All right, so when you start, you're gonna have just a couple of enemies here. Like, literally four. And when you're doing the part of the quest where you need to kill, like, ten taken enemies, truly all you've got to do is, like, reload this opening a couple of times and you're good. And then you're going to want to jump over here. And kill this guy. He's going to hide in there. Can't do much about that. Just die already. Thank you. And then fusion rifle's nice to take these blights out. Mostly because they take four shots. Now, if you're having any issues with traversal... When you come in this opening section, across the way, you're going to find this little cube right here. And this is going to be a kind of traversal helpful thing. So if you have any issues with traversal, look for those cubes. I'll try and point out the ones that I know of for now. So as you drop down, slow your fall a little bit. And now we get into all the cool old nostalgic stuff here. Now everything in this area is basically at an angle. So be careful because it wants to push you off the edge. If you want White Nail 2, by the way, you'll come over here. And this first one is just literally glowing right over here. So just shoot it and you'll be good. Notice how that goes red. That's what you would do is shoot right there. So it would be right there previously. And again, I'll cover that all completely in a video, but just giving you a peek. If you want White Nail 2 when you get done getting it at first to craft it, that's just a quick pickup you can grab. Now for this section, I'm going to go the long way to show you guys how to get down this thing. But if you have options to skip, like typically what I would do is I would jump from where I was up there and I would land on that. And I know I'm able to make that jump with line ramp. because I've done it way too many times. But this is kind of your normal method through the run. If you want to eager edge, if you want to grapple, if you want to skip things, that is up to, for you guys to practice. And later on, if you want to see like a speed run, something like Legend Difficulty might require something like that. So that'll be a separate video as well. So kind of have to hop around the corner and then get your traversal that way. Now, when you get to here, you want to wait for these. And as soon as they start moving, you want to run at them so you can get by them before they move again. Come up to the next one. Wait for it because you can't make like multiple at least I don't think you can. It's been so long. But it's better right here to be safe than sorry because you just don't want to have to redo it. This one's a little recessed, so just make sure you know to stop and look for it. And then this last one sits on the out. So what you want to do is just literally run at it. So as soon as it's moving, you can try and get your movement started. It's a little more lenient than it was before, but you don't want to wait too long. Now up here, that literally just gives you this to jump from. Not a big, not a big helper there, but it is there. Typically what you can do is like run here. Now, if you want to, if you jump on those circles, be careful because you really want to be flush against the wall or it's going to push you off. Easier way to do this is just to fly around the edge. Now, this is hard to clamber on, so you really need to just land it flat on the top. And you'll notice as you come up here, this thing is going to try and push you out. So at this point, you are going to want to try and just get to this edge. Now, the second anomaly where I got the... Uh, what is it? The blueprint for the ship was up here. So get up to this little ledge. You'll look up and you would see some lights up in here. And again, you're looking where the cursor goes red. You'll notice that's right where it was. So those are the two that have been found so far. And this is week one. If you find the guide, if you're looking for all of the hidden oracles and the ship tutorial and all that stuff, that'll be a full separate guide once everything is out there. So you'll come in here and you'll get to this section. Biggest thing to note about this section is... You don't really have a great place to land in here. So these things will kind of spike down and hurt you. And the other things just want to push you off. So as you're kind of floating through, that's why the longer... That's what I was talking about. They try and kill you. Probably used to would have done that before. Now, what is really throwing me off is I don't know what platform this is creating. I don't know if it makes one back on the back side. I have not figured out where that platform is at. So at some point, I'll figure out what that does. I haven't figured it out yet. But usually what I'll do is as it's charging up, I'll jump at it. And then usually by the time I'm done, I'll be safe. And you just kind of learn your timing as you progress through here. You got a guy shooting you in the back. Watch for this thing to blast you off the edge. Duck under here. Now with my boots, I can skip this. Otherwise, you just got to time that jump there. Now, this one is a door open and close situation. Usually what I'll do is like... When it's open, I'll fly at it so it's closed. And then I'm usually safe to be here. Now, this is where another one of these cubes is at. 
And this makes this platform. I went wandering over there, didn't find anything. Still not sure what those platforms do, so stay tuned. But here's your door. Run on through. Now, there may be secrets in the room, haven't found them yet, but what you're gonna do is go to the right-hand side. You can get up here. Gonna be a pretty easy run. And there's gonna be an enemy that spawns at the end. You do not have to kill him. All you gotta do is jump into the final portal on the right. And you should be good. So we're jumping up in here. And you don't even have to fight that guy. And you can just say, see ya. Fall down into what we call the green room. Now, there are going to be probably some secrets throughout this place as well. Whole bunch of stuff to traverse around. There's an upper level to go through. We'll get to that another day. If you want to go explore in there, there's some cool stuff. You want to literally crouch down here. If I can even get out of here. So you'll walk in through here. Come under here. And you should be able to crouch underneath. Fall down here. And you're moving on towards the combat. Run this way. And then that's where some of the stuff goes for the secrets. You'll see the portal way down below when you head around that direction. There's some more secrets over there. That's all related to the ship, just like it was before. And then as you get around this edge, if you get too close, it tends to want to push you off. So at this point, I will typically just make the small leap. I'll usually use my cursor to line myself up. And then at this point, I will truly just go forward not moving a whole lot of direction and then just try and line up the landing try not to overshoot and then here if you make it this far you are, should be in pretty good shape if you really want to be safe you can follow my exact path but it's not necessary all right so we're at the combat section now so we're going to flop our gear to a little more functional and this is just going to be a survival build more than anything but as you do get a rally flag at the boss room remember use your heavy depending on what you're using for ad clear and stuff like that uh, use your ad clear pretty quick and you'll probably be a little better off I'm gonna have some thrall right now So I'm gonna try and get myself a little bit of fire spots to stand in and your first goal is gonna be nuking at least one of these Blights and then we're gonna start looking for captains Gonna look for some hobgoblins that are gonna be shielding And killing all the annoying stuff now this guy is probably shielded just like he was before so again, I'm working on the left side first so I can have some room to work. Then we got the middle. You got your shield, guys. So again, watch for your blights. And again, this is normal difficulty. Definitely something you'll feel when you go between this and legend. Things hurt quite a bit more. Yeah, your main goal is trying to kill these blights and cover some speed where possible. Now you got one guy up here waiting for you. Don't forget about him. Got a lovely captain. And honestly, a solar weapon is really nice here. So the artifact kind of works because there's a good amount of sol solar shields in here. So if you got a solar build, it works pretty well. I mean, these guys are doing shields upon shields right now. So that's cute. And then again, fusion rifle, four shots for me, is clearing out the blight. Once you've got all the blights done and all the enemies down, you have the progression to move forward. You do have to kill all the enemies, so make sure you are working on the enemies quick. And if everybody just walk, wants to walk into a pit of fire, that works well. Again, this is my solar build. If you guys are curious about it, I can share it at the end if you want to see that. When you come down here, first thing you're going to want to do is cover yourself here left to that captain. You're going to want to find the captain over there. He doesn't peek out. Take this guy out early. I'm just using a solar machine gun here. Same thing here. All right, so we're going to take out our first blight as we progress through the room. They changed this room up a little bit. Probably the most, I would think, because there used to be some other stuff going on in here. I mean, even a hand cannon is not a horrible run through here, but you get, if you get ranged back there, this is where something like a heavy can be beneficial. Uh, as we come through here in the middle, watch for your hobgoblins. Those things will kind of hurt a little bit. Just trying to get my reload done. Hobgoblin there. Hobgoblin there. Hi, dude. Drop in, get our blight. we got one more blight over to the right-hand side as well. And this is a craftable one, so if you don't have a good fusion rifle, this is a craftable one from the season with overflow, which works for ammo, which is actually really nice. And then also if you got the ability to do um, controlled burst. 
Now, when you move forward, what's going to happen is you're going to have some adds that spawn behind you. Also, some ranged guys in here. So, if you want to plink with ranged and you really wanted to, like, switch, you could. Or if you just want to run in there, you can do it either way. Kind of fun to plink with this, though. But these, this is where the guys are going to spawn behind you. They're going to try and blast you off the edge. And again, fire does burn them quite well. So at this point, all you're looking to do is take out all of the Scions. And again, sometimes this is Polaris Lance, but any decent ad clearing weapon here is going to be good. And again, the quicker you kill the Scions, the less they can split. You don't really need to worry too much about ammo because you're going to get some at the bottom. Now, if you're really hurting on ammo and you got like some heavy to drop, yeah, grab it because you'll use it in this opening section. But once we drop down, you're going to want to hug the left side to catch your breath. If you need to switch anything up, now's a good time for it. And then we're going to go out there and try and clear as much as we can. So I'm going to switch over to... And again, if you die, that's okay. It's not the end of the world here. It's not a flawless run, which is not the biggest deal. But again... Use this little ledge, you can get booped off, but your goal is just to get up in the mix. And I know my recording might be a little loud on Twitch. I can tweak that later on, so sounds like something I will have to remember to do. And that's where Void is going to hurt the most. It's all those little taken seekers. This is where Void will kill you, especially on Legend difficulty, so be careful about that. But again, I don't need to be conservative with heavy ammo right now. I just need to nuke a lot of this stuff where I can. So my machine gun's really quite nice in here. All right, so this will be your boss room. Now, the way this works, you're going to want to grab your rally flag to so switch everything up that you need to. I do appreciate the break. You can do that on Legend 2. I'm using this as a survival build. Now, one thing I would recommend, have a chess piece set up like this. Whatever your heavy weapon's gonna be in here when you hit your rally flag. I'm up to 12 rockets. Definitely helps you have a little more ammo efficiency because heavy ammo in here sucks. Now, this guy will be shooting the blight bolts at you. This guy's a big Vex one. And then this guy's just chunky. So for me, I take the ugly one first. Ugly's relative, but I take the one that is probably the most annoying to me first because he's the one who's going to be firing all those blight balls at you. And sometimes they warp. And they warp again good times and there's a lot coming at me right now for shots because I can get him somewhat started on like damage that would be great there's just a lot of stuff peppering me right now I don't know if I actually hit him there or not all right so he's gonna start cooking from Dragon's Breath. Dragon's Breath is literally sitting there in the air. That's awful. So again, this is not going to be like an optimal run by any stretch. And I love how he jukes my rockets. It's so cool. Now, if you're one of those who wants to like switch and pull out a different super or a different exotic for damage, you can. I'm just trying to show you guys a somewhat safe and conservative run through this thing. If you wouldn't juke all my stuff, it'd be great. Stop moving. Thank you. I'll keep him busy for a little bit. And then if I can get the Dragon's Breath proc correctly. Yeah, he's just all sorts of annoying. That's why I like this guy first. Now, you could bring in all three if you got three of you together. Each focus one down. If you're running as a team, you can do this a lot faster than I am. I am just trying to show you guys how this can be done in a bit more of a controlled fashion by yourself. And I'm trying to save my super for one of the later guys because they get annoying. And this guy's really not that bad. Once you start landing the rocket shots, he'll go down from that one. All right, so that is done. Now you're going to spawn your next guy. So I'm going to go with the, the Vex dude in the middle. Going to be looking for some Minotaurs here. Try and clear out a few of my adds. This is just where you got to be careful with the captains and the adds that are spawning in. Now, I should have probably done Dragon's Breath first, but there's only so much one can do. I'm just going to sit here and try and cook him real quick. We're 
nearly done there. Kind of love that timing. But he is down. We can have some more adds out here. So I'm going to spawn the final guy. Because all you really got to worry about is the bosses. The adds will just keep coming. So I wouldn't put too much effort into those as much. I've already died. And again, it's not a big deal if you die. It's really not. But solar builds in here are pretty fun. Especially because the artifact is still pretty solar heavy. Later on, if you see this, artifact could be very different. Now the wizards get to be annoying, so watch out for those. Take all the wizards down, get a wave of ads done. If I can cook him. He just has a lot of health. There's like not a great way to say it other than that he's just got a buttload of health. But then if I can start just stacking Dragon's Breath, if he doesn't get too close to me, if I can pump him full of fusion rifle shots, and keep him pretty occupied. I got a little too close to the sun there. All right, so now we're on the new part of the mission. So if you did this years ago, this is gonna be the part that you're not used to. You got a couple wizards over there and you're also gonna have big guy. Now big guy mostly just pushes you. It's annoying more than most things. So you gotta take out the wizards to drop his shield. When he gets to a certain point in health, you're gonna start having some thrall that spawn. And this is where something like this is not the best. Now, if you're running low on heavy, something like Polaris Lance is a great backup weapon for DPS. Alright, so now he's got a health bar. And he's just going to sit here and just pump me full of, like, shots to try and move me. He should, that should have reloaded by now. I'm not entirely sure why it didn't. But at some point, check the floor, too. Don't stand in those. That's a good way to get yourself killed. Now you'll get to about the halfway point in his health, and you've got to clear these blights out. So if you got your fusion rifle still, it's a good way to do it. Watch for the adds that are going to be running to you. If you got anything like a melee that will help cook those down, that'll work. Again, I'm doing this on Titan. I know I got sunspots, but everybody's got their builds. Uh, but dealing with the little guys when you're in these is an important factor. Now, back here, the boss isn't going to hit you as much, so if you want to take out these guys, you can try. It can be a bit of a tough challenge, depending on if he gets line of sight on you. But if you can take out the wizards, and then that'll drop his shield. Hi! He did not get that close to me last time. I'm going to try and get him to run into that. There's a lot of blights in here. Four, five, I think. Can't quite remember. Now that his shield is down, I'm going to try and get that damage going on him. I don't know why I'm not getting the ignition on him with this, though. That's actually quite strange. Or whatever is required for the auto-reload. And that's a wrap. Now, yes, did I have sunspots and things on a Taken or on a Titan? Absolutely. Use your class for what you can. I mean, I went with a very safe build. If I wanted to go for bigger damage, I could have gone Pyrogale. Apparently, these guys can possibly still kill you, so careful about those last few spawns. Run out here and collect your reward. But I went safety with precious scars, granting me overshield on kills. If you've got a survival build, Well of Radiance is going to be good for damage. Pyrogale would be a good way just to nuke him for a bit. Find what works for your subclass. Find what works for you. You're just going to get a pretty basic drop. I don't think you need to keep getting copies of Whisper of the Worm. I think I've had it twice. So there you go. So that is a wrap on Whisper of the Worm. 
and we're going to get back to orbit and cover a couple other things before we wrap up this video. But again, all the secrets on other stuff are going to be in separate videos. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the alert bell to see those videos come to you on the channel. But let's kind of talk about the wrap up stuff when we get back to orbit. But hit that subscribe button. Lots of secrets videos will be based around this mission alone. So that covers your basic run through. That is normal difficulty. I had 20 minutes left on the timer to do everything I showed you. So if you run out of ammo, heavy ammo wise, try and find an exotic that might work. Um, Wish Ender, if you need to just switch over and plink any of these bosses with Wish Ender, still gonna be decent damage with infinite ammo. Polaris Lance is a really solid choice if you've got it as an exotic. That's one you can use for scorching and solar builds and plinking some of those range guys. I show you that. Dragon's Breath works. It really does cook. Um, if you're doing this mission, you may not have Whisper, but your whole goal is to get the crafted version of Whisper. So if you're doing the solo, that's going to be a good way to do it. And from there, again, Void Resistances are going to help between the Ogres and the Axiom Bolts. Solar damage, there's a lot of Captains in here. Taking Captains want to cook fire all over the ground, so that's going to be everywhere. And then anything else you can do to have orbs that heal you. Like my Sunbreaker build was Torches, Solace, Mercy and Empyrean, and that's a way to get restoration and picking up fire sprites, granting restoration. And then I've got soul Invictus for my sunspots. So you can kind of play how you want to, but I would go a survival build. Like I didn't use a healing grenade because I know I've got a lot of healing options. I didn't use my grenade that often. So throw a healing grenade on there and that's gonna help you too. And then once you've got the healing grenade on and if you're getting solar kills, then you've got the option to extend the duration of restoration and radiant by getting those solar weapon kills. And that's something they finally fixed recently. So you can do that again. So those are all good ways to stay alive. Amit is a craftable auto rifle. Any of you can make this weapon. Truly. It's like you go do the crafting quest and it's there. So that's a pretty easy one. This is craftable this season. Overflow and controlled bursts. And then as I said, Dragon's Breath. Um, any big chunk in damage. But the fact that Dragon's Breath cooks while you're not looking at the big boss. Helps you be able to hit the boss with something, and then move around. And something like rewind rounds or target lock is not a bad option, but I've got to stare at the boss the entire time, and some of these guys it's hard to stare at. So I hope this video helps you guys out. If it does, as I said, drop a like below, leave a comment if you've got a build or any tips or anything like that. Hit that subscribe button because we're going to be digging into tips. We're going to be talking about Onslaught. We've got the Brave Arsenal. We've got so much more stuff coming. So if you enjoyed this one, I hope to see you back in the next one. And if you want to find me on Twitch or Twitter, it's Yvonne over there as well. Have a good one, and I'll see you soon.